I feel like I was a, a very bad colorist when I started painting and I didn't understand color at all. I think it started with an interest in observing light through the course of the day, but also with having a very, very um, strong interest in tactility and in materials around me. Slowly I realized that I think everything, if you really break it down, is study of color eventually. So one of the reasons why I, you know, why I narrowed down my purview to painting, I wanted to, I suppose, create or make a surface that could be constantly looked at, that was durational in nature, but at the same time also changing, you know, with the light and it had sort of like a stillness to it, but movement at the same time. So that's one of the reasons why I'm interested in painting. And one of the things that really interested me was how color reacts not only to uh, the shift in light, but also to the shift in seasons. It's been a point of like constant fascination for me to observe how the leaf uh, and the different you know leaves will shift from according to the temperature. So they'll go from like a very deep sort of bluish um, color and vine, but and it'll keep shifting and then there'll be yellow and uh, yeah, there's a lot of lot of lot of focus on the research aspect of um, color making. Making of the pigments is what really takes a lot of our time up and uh, color is so much to do with uh, with surface and material and the actual like particle size of the pigment that it's really important for me to make my own color. I think that's one of the most important, that's really what my practice is grounded in and um, hence we have a color lab where things are being understood and researched every day at the studio. There were a lot of influences at the time. I studied, I went and understood uh, a lot of the process of miniature painting and the kind of colors that go into it. Also started collecting and documenting a lot of these um, sites of deconstruction around uh, Delhi and started collecting a lot of, uh, you know, rubble from these sites and bringing that into the studio and slowly sort of, you know, starting to um, ebb away at that material and realizing that really at the end of it all, anything that you crush really finely or even not so finely can be converted into paint at the end of it. My understanding of color is uh, somewhere between the spectrum of science, like, like, you know, like understanding the chemistry of things from a very scientific point of view and a very structured point of view, and the other end being uh, completely 
non-scientific, the ephemeral and the fleeting moments of color, which cannot really be encapsulated in language. I started with uh, completely dissolving all aspects of like um, distraction and really like narrowing it down to a simple grid, you know. So the point of departure for every painting is laying this very uh, measured grid onto this sort of wavering surface and having established a plane or a, a space for which, you know, moments of fiction can sort of pass by or sort of occur. You know, while I feel that my painting is, uh, paintings are flat, there's also a lot of relief and there's also a lot of movement within the work itself. I keep adding different layers. It's almost as if the grid is a reference and in a similar way, I feel that, you know, this is the space, this is my space that I'm going to be working within. I'm very interested in like moment of rupture or one can say glitch in my work. One of the moments that I strive to uh, orchestrate within a singular frame is this flicker or this glitch, you know, which is sort of unexpected and which will constantly keep shifting. You know, the idea of glitch in optical art and I feel it sort of like disrupts the entire like interrogation of even optical art. I think in my practice it manifests as uh, a non-calculated measure, essentially, and a non-anticipated uh, moment within our perception. I tend to spend a lot of time um, looking, at, looking at a work when I'm working on it. And I also spend a lot of time not looking at it, staying away from it. And I feel that often there'll be a moment of like, um, you know, understanding or a moment of epiphany while I'm looking or while I'm looking away. And suddenly like, there'll be a certain shadow falling on the work and everything will just make sense. And the whole, the composition will kind of um, emerge and sort of, you know, disappear and dissolve and re-emerge in this, you know, prolonged duration of looking. So I like to think of the studio as an archive of dust. I mean, I, I really do think of it as a research-based practice where, you know, uh, a team is coming in and they're working on making different colors, on understanding different color relationships, observing like sunrise colors, sunset colors. Then we'll do moon study and moonlight study, the moonlight falling on different objects. So there's just, it's just so much happening. My everyday routine and ritual is very important to me. You know, I come in the morning, I have my routine, I do, I do things, I look at things, and uh, there's a rhythm to it. While an artist and every person has their moments in isolation, it's also really important to go in. And, you know, as Heidegger often says, it's important to go in and out of isolation. I feel it's kind of similar in my studio where I have my moments of isolation, but then I need a team of people around me who, are, who have been working with me and who are as interested in color as me. You know, after having spent a decade examining color, I still feel that I don't know anything about it and that I don't quite understand it, which is what really keeps me going is, um, you know, and I, and I feel that if, if I was at any given point of time to have, you know, to, to have understood it all together, I'd probably stop chasing color and the different aspects that it encompasses.